Hello, welcome back to Urban X Files. My name is Keith, and today is another ghostly experience that I'm going to share with you. This ghostly experience takes us back to the late 90s, and this is the experience of a haunted campsite. And it says that the recording of information that is about to be shared with you is very true. The location is Diamond Peak and it is something that she will never forget. The events might not seem as terrifying as I relay it to you and for those who weren't there. But let me assure you that what happened at that campsite was very real and very scary. This is what happened. In the summer, my parents and I went camping to southwestern Wyoming and my older brother and his family had come too. Now we towed a tent, uh, a tent trailer behind our car and we drove up this dirt road and we was close to the summit of the mountain. This particular road was an isolated road and as we drove up it, there were a few campsites that existed off the road here. These were deserted, they'd been left. So we arrived at the last campsite, which was where the road ended. And as we were there and driving through here, we did not see another person about. Now, it was late afternoon when we arrived and it was a very wooded area with lots of trees. There was aspens, pine trees and all various types of trees. It was right into the heart of nature. I remember feeling strange as we set up our campsite. It was an eerie, intense feeling like we were due a storm so there wasn't a cloud in the sky but I remember this very clearly as the evening came on we decided to come outside and have a look at the stars her brother Dan had also decided to do the same. And as they were getting ready for bed, her brother had began to say how strange he felt in this specific place. He said that it was a bit strange given that they were in such a wooded area that there was no wildlife. They couldn't hear birds, they couldn't hear the crickets in the evening, they couldn't hear any noise that would suggest there was wildlife around. So, it gave off this intensely spooky vibe. And then, in the middle of this forested area, there was something in the pit that began to thrash around. This caused my brother Denny to stop what he was saying and turn around and investigate because he thought possibly a skunk, a bear or something that had wandered into the campsite. and. There was silence. But every now and then, we would hear a faint 
noise in the background. The fire we'd set had started to die down, and we could hear the crackling of what was left of the fire. So it turned to early hours, and I began to hear a strange rustling sound, and it sounded like we were by the ocean and the waves were coming in along the beach. But it grew louder as it came closer and soon it was obvious that it was a gust of wind rustling through the trees. And just before it hit, Denny and I had felt the temperature plummet and turned our mild summer's night into a winter's night. So as this bitter gust of wind turned our mild summer's night into a wintry force, the, the wind come out of nowhere and caused this bitter ice blast it just caused it was it was unexplainable i do not know the words is what is wrote down and exploded was the only word that she could use to describe the events that was about to happen this gust of wind hit it was intense it was almost gale force the strange thing was though is the way it blew things around a folding chair was sent spinning off when another that was next to it didn't move. It was as if this wind chose what it wanted to pick up and throw around. And glasses and utensils had, had flew off the picnic table. Yet the paper plates and the napkins hadn't moved. So I thought, surely a gust of wind would blow anything that was light. Yet it blew the heavier objects, but left the lighter objects fixed where they was. It just didn't make sense. It didn't even rustle. And it was loud. It was so loud and it was making it sound as it was rushing by, as if we were stood next to a steam train. And it lasted for no more than 10 seconds. Although at the time it felt like it would never end. And it then receded. And as it continued past us towards the north, my brother and I looked at each other in disbelief. What the hell was that? Is that all that could come out of his mouth? And before I was able to answer, we heard this gust coming back in our direction. And again, the cold temperature dropped as it hit us. And right before the gust had exploded back within our campsite, and it repeated its strange behaviour of only knocking certain things over and blowing other things. And we listened as it receded once again, east of the direction it came from. And as we sat there in disbelief, we could hear this thing circling and it came through again from the west this time and it kept repeating the same behavior. Then it was gone. No noise, no cold, no sound, nothing. So it's pretty obvious that Denny and myself were wide awake and terrified at this time. We kept looking around, waiting for this thing to return. Thankfully, it didn't come 
back. Then, out of nowhere, we heard the roar. A scream. And it made us both jump. We thought we'd heard a mountain lion roar and it wasn't. It was off in the distance, in the same direction that the wind had gone. So we both got our flashlights and we walked a little further into it thinking someone could be there screaming for help. Except this roar that sounded like from it was like from a mountain. We just didn't know what was going on. But it sounded as if there was a young girl screaming for help. And we shouted out more to see if we could hear the noise again, the scream for help and find the location, but nothing. There was no answer. So we ventured a little further, but we didn't want to go too far for we knew this was not a safe place. And with this strange gust of wind, which at the time we didn't think that it would belong to something paranormal. And the cries of this girl, if that's what it was, it didn't get any closer. We couldn't work out where it was coming from. It didn't change. So we headed back to the campsite where we both went back to lie down. And about an hour after all this had happened, the crying stopped. And it wasn't until the light of dawn that had begun to light up the campsite that we were able to relax and fall asleep for a few hours. And the strange thing was is that I had a dream and in the dream I was searching for a girl that was trapped somewhere where we was and I was unable to locate her. So I woke up when Denny had said I think it's time to go and as he woke me up the image of this girl was etched on my brain and it looked like she was from the western times a frontier style dress that was sat in front of a log cabin and in the dream this girl was crying and the cabin door was hanging off its hinges windows were broken and that was the last image I remember in my dream so when I got up and Denny and I decided to go and see if we could find another camp to see if anything else had happened or someone had been hurt and we as we headed east, we'd packed everything up. We didn't want to spend another night there. And our families had left and it's strange because other family members had slept right through and not heard a thing. And then a few hundred yards away from us as we drove further away, I felt my heart skip a beat because there, at the base of the mountain, was the remains of a ruined log cabin. And it, not just any log cabin, it was the log cabin that was in my dreams. 
she said to Denny that this had she'd seen before and we got out and had a little look around and there wasn't a great deal left because with nature not being kept at bay water got in there was a bit of damage inside and you could clearly tell nobody had lived there for a while and it was as they were about to leave when she stepped and heard a crunch on the floor as she looked down she lifted a foot off a piece of glass but under the glass was a photograph so she bent down and picked up this photograph which caused her to drop in her hand and scream for the picture in the photograph was of a girl in a frontier line dress exactly as she was in the dream. Needless to say, we left and we did not go back to that campsite again. And as, as time had passed and she began to do a little research, the years went by and the internet had got bigger and bigger and this is where she'd been able to find more accounts of a similar thing she'd experienced. It says that many moons ago there was a, a campsite where various people lived and the only way I can describe it is that if you've ever played Red Dead on the PlayStation, Red Dead 2, when they go to that campsite that they've got um, in like the Wild West, it, 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 it's, it was like that. and they found like there was pictures of this cabin that was dilapidated and, and had damage to it and it, it, it was hit by a very violent storm and in the storm there was the young girl crying and as as the storm hit, the log cabin where they lived had had an unfortunate incident where a pack of mountain lions had made their way inside where the warmth and the fire and the smell of fresh food had lingered in the air, which caused hungry mountain lions to devour the people within the cabin and it is said that the girl was the only one left and was for whatever reason spared by the lions perhaps they were full eating all their, their family and friends or whatever and the poor girl went off in search of help where she sadly passed away to the elements and that was the last time anybody had used that specific camp and that was a very sad story of the haunted campsite and from then on I, um, I think after that, from what I could find, is that the campsites from around that area had all been demolished and uh, flattened uh, because it, it, it was a very unpleasant um, site that was left. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this pretty dark, creepy story. If you did, please let me know in the comments below. But for now, 
I wish you a Merry Christmas.